I know sanitation is not one of the hottest topics to talk about at a TEDx event, and I know a lot of you are going to be irked about me talking about sanitation and talking dirty right now. But I know it's the need of the hour. I know we as a society are being grappled by lack of sanitation and adequate water, water, uh, water in our country. So uh, I'm basically going to talk about what I did in Bihar. Uh, it was a six-month journey that I had. So this was in a remote village in Nalanda district where I was involved in the construction of a toilet. Right? So we love food. We Indians love to talk about food. We like to talk about different aromas, different textures, different cuisines. We like talking about where we got different ingredients from. But what happens after that? Nobody wants to talk about what happens after the same food that we all eat goes to the digestive system. Nobody wants to talk about that. Why? Is that a taboo? We post pictures on Instagram, on Facebook, on any social media, talking about different kinds of food that we've eaten. But the end product, nobody wants to talk about. And we see that lying all around the place, but still nobody bats an eyelid about it. Why? Why is it such an issue for us? Why do we not talk shit? I'm sorry for my language, but that's basically, to put it very crudely, that's basically what we don't do. So as a kid, I remember laughing about this joke, asking people, what's the longest toilet in the world? The Indian railways, right? We know that Indian railways are littered with our Indian human poop lying all around. But nobody did anything about it. It was funny then, it was funny when I was a kid. I laughed about it, I used to tell the jokes to my friends, to my parents, to my relatives. But it isn't funny anymore. We have 1.1 billion people all over the world who defecate in the open. Of this 1.1 billion people, we have about 600 million of them in India. This is not a small number. It's, quite, it's a country by itself. And we know how big a population India is. So we come from this country where Mahatma Gandhi about 100 years ago said that sanitation is more important to us than independence. It's 100 years now, but we still see 60% of our population defecating in the open. So, but the government has done quite a lot in the past. We've introduced sanitation campaigns, we've introduced NBA, which is the Nirmal Bharat Abhiyan. We spoke a lot about ending open defecation in a country like ours. We said we'll provide toilets to the rural communities, to urban communities, We've done quite a bit. They plan to end open defecation in India by 2012, but we're still falling short of it by huge numbers. And then thankfully, Mr. Narendra Modi, who was appointed as the Prime Minister in 2014, on October 2nd said he's going to launch his flagship program called the Swachh Bharat Mission. So I'm sure everybody's been talking about Swachh Bharat Mission. We've been speaking about Swachh Bharat Mission Grameen, which is basically to provide sanitation uh, facilities to villagers. We even had a recent movie by Akshay Kumar. I don't know how many of you saw this, but it was a movie where the movie is about toilet. I mean, who wants to watch a movie about the humble latrine, right? And see, so uh, Narendra Modi in a speech as well said that it's important to construct toilets before we start spending our money in building temples. So we, we're falling short of around seven crore toilets that are going to be built in villages in the next two years. So the Swachh Bharat Mission Grameen, his idea is to end open defecation in India by 2019. While I think it's an ambitious project, I think we're going to fall short of it by huge numbers. But at least it's the first time that our Prime Minister actually stepped up to speak about a pressing issue that our country is facing today. Right, so India is not the only country that is having problems with open defecation, right? We have a lot of other countries, other developing nations, in Africa and Southeast Asia are battling the same problems that we are facing. Be it lack of sanitation, lack of water, we're all fighting the same problems. So the United Nations set up the SDGs, which is the Sustainable Development Goals 2030, where they decided that by the year 2030, we as a world will end open defecation. That's the goal six, which is clean water and sanitation will be provided to every human being on our planet. So but why? Why do we talk about sanitation? Why is it so important? We all talk about clean water. Everybody wants to spend our budget on clean water, providing clean water, clean drinking water services to everybody, improving our bore wells, doing things, but nobody wants to talk about clean toilets. I mean, the basic, simple porcelain toilet that you all sit on in the morning, have, read your newspaper, come up with brilliant ideas in the morning, is something that's missing in our world. Why? Why do we speak about it? Thousand-odd children a day 
die because of diarrhea related diseases and this is because of lack of adequate sanitation facility people defecating in the open cause rampant disease spread because of this 1 gram of fecal matter contains numerous viruses and bacteria that cause harmful diseases to us out of these 1000 children that die 300 of them are in india every single day 300 children die because of lack of adequate sanitation we know kids drop out of school kids in rural communities drop out of school because of lack of sanitation facilities especially girl children the moment they hit puberty and start menstruating kids the girl children drop out of school because they don't have a sanitation facility sanitation is not just bringing a toilet it's about creating a sense of dignity and sense of pride for people i don't even want to talk about how polluting it is to our environment where we see people defecating in the open and we see all sorts of filth lying all around it's our human waste that's lying around we do not want our kids and the next generations to grow up in this world and the economic losses are really high as well we lose about 106 billion dollars because of lack of sanitation because of health because of people dropping out of work people dropping out of colleges people dropping out of schools so it is an issue that we need to speak about so i was lucky enough to be selected for a project that was in bihar while i was doing my masters in sweden so i've never been to bihar right and it's a scary place for me so i'm i'm from bangalore so for me to go to to go to a place like bihar is is like a big culture shock so i went there i went to bihar i went to this little village called mohadipur i stayed there for 6 months not knowing what i was going to do i was just told go and build a toilet i said okay that seems really easy so this is basically the village where i stayed in for 6 months and uh, this is uh, that's the toilet that we're building in the background so this community of around 100 people have no sanitation facility at all so we are building a community toilet for them and they were surprised they said why are you building a toilet we have the entire field around here that right? they're all they're all they're the ones who carry the lota and they go into the field in the dark and um, i said no i think it's important that you guys have a toilet I said no we have the entire field why do we need to sit in a room in like a 4 by 4 room sit on it not know what to do after that so i found it really shocking because for me the toilet is is the most important thing right i mean just by a quick show of hands how many of you look at a toilet the first thing when you check into a hotel or any room the first thing that you all want to do is see how clean the toilet is we've taken it for granted we think a toilet is our right but it's a luxury for these people so i went there the first the first week was really difficult for me to speak to anybody probably because of my language i knew very little of hindi i knew very little of uh, bhojpuri that they spoke but i i had a translator luckily so i was able to do that but but what i saw in the village was really shocking there's a sewer line that runs right below the kitchen that's where the kids defecate in the open the mother washes the kid there and then with the same hand goes and cooks the food there's no there's no sanitation facility people don't know what hand washing does they don't use soaps they don't use anything they want they defecate in the open and they assume that a child's fecal matter doesn't cause harm to them but it is equally harmful uh, as you can see the, that's the bowel there you have kids defecating right where the bowel is and that was a toilet that was constructed by the government so the government has used a thing called a supply driven approach where they decided that we just going to go ahead give toilets to people and then tell them to use it but it doesn't work like that in a country like ours and that was basically what i thought was going to happen to my project where i had to just go and build a toilet but i realized that a demand driven approach was actually what was needed so i thought first let me speak to the villagers to find out why they did not want to use a toilet and what we can do about it so i started conducting uh meetings with the people in the village but what happened is the very first meeting that i had was with only men i asked them can we meet and only the men came and they conveniently said yeah yeah we can start the meeting so i said no the sanitation facility is for the women and for the kids as well so the second meeting onwards we had women and men and kids participating in all our meetings because none of them realized that sanitation was more important for the women and for the children so the women in this village reported of sexual abuse because they had to go and defecate in the in the open at 4 a.m. in the morning they had to hide from all the predators not to mention there were jackals and cobras and scorpions that 
that I've seen, and these were the women who walked a kilometer every single day to get water and come back to their household. So what we did is, a lot of them believed that having a toilet in the house it was a dirty thing. They didn't know that it was it was okay if it was constructed in a safe and hygienic manner. There wouldn't be a problem with having a toilet in the building. So what we decided to do is, we decided to construct a community toilet where everybody can utilize and create a sense of ownership, where people will be responsible for maintaining the toilet. Constructing the toilet was the easy bit, but getting people to sit on it was really difficult. So what we did is, we overcame all of this through regular meetings that we had with the villagers, and we got the kids involved as well on what they thought the importance of sanitation was. So one thing that we did with our sanitation uh, toilet that we constructed, ours were completely waterless. So we adopted this technology called uh, ecological sanitation toilets, which basically are waterless, and they work on composting. So these toilets are waterless, and we had a composting chamber that was constructed below uh, the entire toilet facility, and we had a composting chamber where the entire fecal matter was composted, and after a period of five years, was removed as compost and utilized as a fertilizer for the field. So 90% of the people who are in this village are primarily farmers. So they rely on using DAP, urea, and harmful chemicals uh, for for their farms. So what we did is, uh, we had this technology from Sweden where we could sanitize urine and sanitize fecal matter and apply the same onto crops. So that's basically what we did. So that's papaya, that's lettuce and cabbage, and uh, we used this to grow crops. So we bought half an acre of land where we had farmers come and see how beneficial it was to use human excrements for creating food. A lot of the villagers were shocked. They said, "No, this is something that we're not going to eat." And the moment they saw people uh, uh, like us eat, where I was plucking papayas from the tree and eating, they said, "Okay, it's fine. We can eat it." This is basically the toilet that we constructed for this village uh, in Bihar. So this was a composting chamber. Uh, we used this thing called as vermi composting, where we had Red worms that were that were put inside the composting chamber, and these worms were responsible for generating the compost from the fecal material. Yeah, so uh, this was when we were laying the first foundation uh, in the toilet. Right, so so we got the women to inaugurate the toilets because I think it's the most important thing that we could do for the women. Because none of the women ever felt empowered; they felt they were always the neglected part of the society. But then, when women started speaking about the problems that they faced because of a lack of toilet, they realized that they had the need to have a toilet. So, one of the a very funny story that I heard when I was working here was: so I asked these women during one of the interviews, "We're constructing a toilet for you. That's so important because you all leave at four in the morning. You all don't know where to go to the toilet. You all wait until all the men are asleep." All the drunks are asleep, and then you go into the fields. So why do you do that? And that's when we can talk about our husbands to each other. So they go in groups of five, they sit far away from each other, and they talk. So that's the reason why they did not want to use a toilet. Something as simple as that. So we, it was funny for me at that point of time, but it was a very serious issue. So we got them to finally use the toilet. So before the toilets were constructed, we had about. 80% of them drop out of school the moment they hit puberty. But the moment the toilets were installed, we had an increased amount of kids going back to school. We had women going back to school. We had kids going back to school, and also we created a sense of dignity and pride among the villagers. So that was something that we did through this intervention. So yeah, what 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 can we do? What can we do as a society, right? I mean, that's basically what we're trying to do. We're trying to find a purpose in life. We're trying to see what we as individuals of this society. Can help. How can we help our community members? So while we have fancy toilets created by、uh, Toto in Japan, where we have heated toilets, we have self-rising lids, we have we have technology that has gone to that that point of、uh, time, but we don't have something like that in India. So I think it's really important that there's no specific toilet that is working in a different part of the world. It's different technologies that have to be adopted 
like we built the waterless toilet because this place in Bihar lacked water. So there's no one fit toilet saying that we need a poor flush toilet, we need water toilets. We, there's nothing. It, it just depends on the scenario that we're in. So reinvent the toilet. Luckily, we have Bill Gates and Melinda Gates who have started Bill and Melinda Foundation, which is basically reinventing the toilet. So we're working towards reinventing the toilet in the next couple of years, where everybody can have access to safe, economical, and hygienic method of waste disposal, right? And uh, thanks to Narendra Modi that we've made sanitation a political uh, priority right now, because everybody's talking about Swachh Bharat. We know that toilets have to be constructed, but I think what they don't understand is constructing the toilet is actually the easy part. Getting people to use it is the difficult part. We need to create awareness. We need to tell people why we need to use a toilet. We need to tell people what are the harmful effects of not using a toilet. What are the harmful effects of defecating in the open? How their fecal matter is contaminating our groundwater resources, our soil, and our air. Right? It's, it's important to do this. And I think it's important to make sanitation sexy. I think it's really important to do that. I think everybody likes to do something that's really cool in life. We like to own fancy gadgets. We like to own an iPod, an iPhone. We like to own things for this because it's cool. It's, it's really sexy to own these things, right? But we need to make it important for these people in the rural communities to tell them that owning a toilet is sexy and is cool. So with that, I want to end this uh, talk by requesting you all to go out and speak to people who are uh, working in your homes. It could be a maid, it could be a driver. Speak to them about the importance of having sanitation facilities. The government has come up with numerous schemes in providing subsidies to, uh, to villagers and to people uh, in rural communities to build toilets on their own. So I request you all, please stand up, speak for these people, speak for the rights of these people, because sanitation is an important right. I think while we're busy sending satellites to Mars, we should start focusing on what we're left with on our planet as well. Right? So I think it's important to make sanitation really sexy and really important. So please speak up and speak sanitation and talk dirty. Thank you.